Hello everyone. In this segment of the training module we'll be looking at programming the Sentry Controller. We'll take a look at the various menu items, what each one of them mean, and how to go in and out of the various picks on the menu. If you place your fingers along the bottom right hand edge of the controller, you'll find three buttons that are used for programming. The button on the left is the function button and is used to take you in and out of menus. The middle button is a down arrow and the button on the right is an up arrow. The two arrow buttons are for scrolling through the menu picks and for changing settings within each parameter. To begin programming, press the function button once. Remember, the function button is the one on the left. Once this has been pressed, you are now in the programming mode. Press the up arrow to scroll through the menu items. When you see one that you want to change, pressing the function button again will take you into setting mode and the current setting will be displayed. Press the up or down arrows to change the setting and do this until the desired setting is achieved. Then press the function button again to return to the menu. When you press the function button to enter programming mode, the first menu item you will see is run. The purpose of run is to store values and take you back to normal operating mode. As you go through the various menu picks and make changes, you will then need to go back to run and hit function one more time. This saves all the changes you have just made and takes the controller back to its regular operating mode. Hitting the button for the up arrow will take you to the next item which is LO or low. This represents the domestic hot water set point and is factory set at 160. It can be set as low as 80 degrees or as high as 190. This number is the water temperature the boiler will deliver during a call for domestic hot water. It's important to remember this is not the temperature of the domestic hot water but the temperature of the boiler water on a domestic call. And because this set point applies to hot water, this is the one that will get priority on a hot water call and also is not subject to outdoor reset. Pressing the up arrow again will take you to high, which is the next menu item. This represents the central heating set point or the temperature of the water the boiler will deliver on a heating call. This can be set as high as 200 or as low as 80 and comes with a factory setting of 130. If you are installing the boiler in a high temperature application such as baseboards, fan coils or radiators, you'll probably need to increase this setting as 130 will be too low and the boiler will not be delivering enough heat. In low temperature applications such as in floor slab heating, this setting will likely need to be reduced. The next menu item is DIF or differential. This differential only applies to the heating set point and represents how far below the set point the boiler water temperature can fall before the burner will come on. The setting can range from 1 degree to 40 and the factory setting is 20. The differential that tells the boiler how far above set point the water temperature can go before the burner turns off is factory set at 10 degrees and can't be adjusted. The next menu item, RES, represents the outdoor reset curve, so you go into this menu if you want to adjust the slope of the curve. The way the Sentry controller handles outdoor reset is you program one number, which represents both the outside air temperature and the boiler water temperature. The factory default setting is 85, so that means at 85 degrees outside air temperature, the boiler will deliver 85 degree water. This number can be adjusted anywhere between 70 and whatever the central heating set point is. If the reset curve is adjusted to equal the central heating set point or high in the menu picks, that is the same as turning the outdoor reset off. Starting fan speed, or SFS, is the next menu item as you scroll through. This indicates the fan speed during ignition and is not something that should be adjusted in the field on a standard installation. This parameter should only be adjusted when directed by an NTI technical support person. The factory set point is 80 on all models except the 400, which has a setting of 50. As you continue to scroll through the menu, the next item is HFS, or high fan speed. This dictates the maximum firing rate for the boiler, and if this number is reduced, it equates to derating the boiler or reducing the maximum BTU output. The factory setting for HFS is 240, but when the boiler is first installed, you may notice that the HFS setting is 205 and it can't be programmed above that number. Once the boiler has fired once, though, the setting will automatically change to 240. If you are in a specific application that does, in, in fact, warrant reducing the, the high fan speed and you want to reduce this number, 
The controller will only remember the setting if it's set below 205. If the setting is changed to a number between 205 and 240, the controller won't recognize the setting and will automatically revert to 240. So if you are going to change the number, it needs to be changed to something below 205. Low fan speed, or LFS, is next on the menu and this represents the fan speed at low fire. This number is factory set at 40 for the 200 and 50 for the 100 and the 150. While this setting can be adjusted, it's not something that is typically adjusted on a standard installation. Specific applications may call for an adjustment to this parameter to increase the minimum fan speed. However, doing this will reduce the turndown ratio of the boiler. ER5 is the domestic hot water timeout parameter. This boiler controller includes domestic hot water priority, which means that when the boiler is receiving a call for both heat and hot water, it will give priority to the hot water call until that call is satisfied, and it will then address the heating call. We know that as long as there is a call for hot water in place, the boiler will never service central heat. Because of that, we've added this priority timeout feature where if the boiler receives a steady call for hot water that lasts two and a half hours, it will flip priority, taking it off hot water and placing it on central heat. This is to avoid having the boiler go extended periods of time without servicing central heat when there is a malfunction of some sort on the domestic hot water side. If the boiler gets a continuous call for hot water that is two and a half hours long, it concludes that something isn't right with hot water, so it takes priority off domestic and places it on central heat. In this mode, the boiler will continue to service domestic hot water calls, but only when it is not receiving a call for heat. This feature is either off or on and comes factory set as on. When the boiler is operating in ER5 mode, it will flash ER5 on the display along with the usual cycle of the three numbers. In other words, the unit will display water temperature, air temperature, gas input value, then ER5. The way to clear the ER5 and put the controller back into its normal operating mode of placing priority on domestic hot water is to cycle the power. If the power is turned off and then on again, the controller will revert back to its factory settings. Next is FRE, which stands for Freeze Protection. And when this is on, the controller operates the burner and circulator when it senses the water temperature has fallen to 40 degrees. It's important to remember that this feature doesn't provide a guaranteed protection from freezing, but it is intended to help reduce the probability of that happening. This feature can either be turned on or off and comes factory set as on. The last menu item is STO, representing the storage feature. This feature is only active on combi boilers, so is not something that needs to be considered on a heat-only model. A common problem in delivering hot water from a plate heat exchanger is what is known as the sandwich effect, where the boiler delivers cold water until it is able to get the boiler water hot enough to deliver hot water. The storage feature is designed to take care of that problem as the boiler will continue to run hot boiler water across the plate heat exchanger, keeping it hot for the next call. The way this works is that when a call for hot water ends, the controller starts a timer, and for the next period of time, it continues to run hot water across the plate heat exchanger. If there is another call for hot, hot water during that period of time, the controller will start the counter at zero again. This feature can be turned off or set anywhere from 1 to 24 hours and the factory setting is at 4 hours. If you are using the combi boiler with a storage tank, this feature should be turned off. So now that you've gone through each one of the menu items and adjusted each one to meet your particular requirements, you then need to remember to go back to run again. As we discussed previously, the way to get out of the programming mode and back into regular operating mode and lock in all the programming changes is to scroll back to run and hit the function button one more time. This locks in all the changes and takes the controller back into regular operating mode. And that concludes this session on programming the Sentry Controller. On behalf of everyone at NTI, I'd like to thank you for your interest in our product and hopefully this segment was of value to you. Thank you very much.